What's going on everybody? Burt Byler here and we are going to try something new instead of just reacting to songs that we've never heard before. I want to deep dive on American Aquarium's Losing Side of 25. If you're new here, I'm making Celebrate Americana music, so hit that like and subscribe button. Chuck D, so how do you feel about deep diving on a song? Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. It's here. It's handy. I'm a one-take Andy. All right, let's talk about that guitar part, because mm -hmm. that guitar part's going to be driving a lot of the song. Uh, you being the guitar guru, how do you feel about that guitar part and how important it is to the song? It's cool. I like it. It's plucky. I can show you guys that uh, guitar part in just a minute, a little bit for you guys that want to go a little bit deeper and learn that lead lick. I can show you kind of the concept behind that. I like it. It borders almost on the kind of loop sounding, um, like Keith Urban type country music. You know what I mean? So it's like right there on that limit for me. But the texture of it and the way that it's used in this song makes it a lot different. I dig that. All right. So that's going to set up the entire song of playing a younger man's game. And if you are a songwriter out there, you know that feeling. You know your old buddy uh, Rick is going to get a job at the bank and he is uh, saving all the money. He's getting all the things that sometimes we as songwriters wish we had, like a nice house and nice uh, cars and all that kind of stuff. But we have chosen a different route, which I chose two of the hardest things to make money at being a teacher and being a songwriter and a musician. So I'm forever screwed. All right, let's talk about that lyric for just one second. Mm -hmm. uh, I love the lyric where it says, they all ask me how I'm doing. I just smile and realize that although it was kind to me, my youth is all behind me. Now I'm on the losing side of 25. Can you remember feeling like the losing side of 25? Let's talk about the losing side of 35 real quick. At, at 27 was a beautiful time. I didn't have all the pains, all the aches. What, what would you call the losing side of 35? The, I mean, there's a couple of words we could add. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, I remember being like, man... I've turned 22 and I feel older, you know, the, this, uh, there's something to it because, you know, BJ writes the song about turning 30 basically, right. The losing side of 25, he means like turning 30. He's talking about how he hasn't taken on this standard lifestyle of like getting a good job, getting an education, all of that. He went out there and decided to like grind it out and like chase his dream on the road as a musician and maybe he's not blowing up. Maybe he's not a big musician, but, you know, everybody's like, how you doing? You're still struggling at the dream, still doing that, you know? And, yeah, he is. Like, that's kind of the, the principle behind, you know, his concept for this song is, like, that he's chosen a different path. It's tough to say what, like, the, the losing side of 25 is for him. If it's, you know... And and let's just talk about that American Aquarium. By the way, I'm a big fan. Mm -hmm. uh, this is probably a biased video. Don't think I'm coming with any critiques. Uh, American Aquarium is considered the hardest working band in country music. They have played an unbelievable amount of shows, and they are the typical definition of a band that grew a fan base by playing shows. Now, I personally respect that, love that, have nothing but respect for people that go and play 200, 250 shows a year. I think the internet has changed the game to where maybe that's not the smartest decision for me, not necessarily, necessarily for anybody else. I, as a 36-year-old man, am not trying to take that path, but... Man, they have worked so 
so hard to build the fan base that they have. And man, I, I think everybody else would have given up a long time ago. But shout out to BJ and, and all the folks that uh, have fought so hard. And how, how many times have they changed bands? Like, didn't you say just recently they just changed uh, yeah, lineups? Yeah, like in, in 2017 they announced a lineup change. And at that point, I think he made a statement that there had been 26 different members of the band. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, Pretty you cool. want to make it in country music as a songwriter? Great. Try mm. making it as a band mm. where you're trying to pay five or six mouths uh, on top of paying yourself. That is tough, for sure. I, I think like what we're starting to hear is this this question of what you know, what is the losing side of 25? Like what does that mean? What does it mean to be losing, right? And I think what we're starting to hear is this uh, writer talk about whether or not this is actually losing. Is this the, the losing side of 25, what does that mean, you know? Like, I think he's feeling a lot of, you feel this external pressure from success, and I think it's getting to kind of the root of the question, which is, how do you measure success? What is your metric for success? And I think he handles it, like, in depth uh, as, as the song goes on. Yeah, and I think that this, for every songwriter of all time, you have had these conversations with your parents. You have had these conversations with your friends where uh, fighting for what you believe in and what you are passionate about does not make sense to everybody. It doesn't enter their brains. So many people uh, have industries that are easy to get a job in, not necessarily easy, but easier than making a living doing art or music. And for so many people, it just doesn't make sense to suffer like songwriters and musicians have to do. And uh, I don't think there's any right answer. I don't think there's any right path. But I think thanks to the internet, there's a lot of different ways to do it now. Um but, man, I remember I've had that conversation with my mom probably five times. Uh, stop throwing your life away or stop uh, chasing something when you could just have it easy. And, you know, I, easy is not always the best decision. Uh, I have no regrets in the life that I've chosen and traveling and, and playing music for a while. And now I am more settled down to where I am working a job. But my question for everybody is, what is success for you? Think about what success means for me as a father. What does it mean to be a good father? What success is uh, a musician? Obviously, I can't hit the road. Obviously, I can't do the things that a lot of musicians consider to be success. But you know what? I like writing songs. Success to me is writing songs, making music with my friends and sharing it to people. Success is this YouTube and Twitch uh, channel to where I get to hang out with people and talk about music. Like, you get to define what success is, and there's no right answer for it. This, this is a thing that we talk about constantly, is like, what is your metric of success? And we've both talked about, personally, how... Uh, there is a we have we grow up feeling we have this thing inside of us that what we want is to be somebody, right? It may not exactly be a fixation on celebrity, but there's there's a there's a focus in our culture on wealth and celebrity and how those two interact and this like kind of nexus of idealism, especially in the church. And definitely in the church. So this, we grow up with this pressure to be somebody, right? And that's like a, so it's a, a drive for status, like a, a, maybe even like a greed or a lust for status. Like it's something that we feel at a yes. visceral level. American, uh, and it's not just American, it's, it's everywhere, but I think it's extra American how we just got to keep up with the Joneses. We got to have uh, things that make us 
feel good about ourselves, and it does not do anything. There's a there is a reason that a man who is a good father and and has a job that he enjoys doing and uh, and is like a good man and doing well in life still feels like there's something missing inside him. And it's because he's constantly being told that there's something missing inside him so that he will buy more things yeah. so that he could be tapped into. Your life is being made through advertising constantly to, to look like it pales in comparison to other people's experiences, all the way from beer commercials to social media influencers. You are being given the message that you don't quite measure up and if you buy this thing, you will measure up. Where did this come from that suddenly we measure our success by the gaudiness of our house or the height of our vehicle or how many vehicles we have, the type of vehicle that we drive? Like, where did it come from that we suddenly decided... People trying to worth, get some money from us, man. Our worth as men and women was dependent on symbols of status that make us look wealthy. Speaking of buying things, burtbyler.com slash merch. You can get all of the merchandise we have. If you want a status symbol, pull up to a party with that bad boy right there. Mm -hmm. You want you want to be somebody? What's that? Is it the Kings of Leon song that's called Be Somebody? I've been no, like I think trying that, to You think. somebody. You somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it not Be Somebody? Well, why don't we just... Uh... Be somebody to be somebody. Yeah. All right. Uh, we got so off topic. Haven't yeah. We? No, that's that's the sermon. And also, we talk about being a good man or a good woman. Good is relative. You get to decide what good is. I mean, to an extent, can yeah. we all just agree that M anybody murder is not good? I was gonna obviously. say anybody that drinks diet coke is not a good human <laughs> being. <laughs> like those are your two. Diet Coke and murder are equivalent. You heard it here or, from Burt Baller, ladies or and gentlemen. If you eat Burger King, ow, Burger King is trash. That it is me right not good. Also, Diet Coke, Burger King, and beans. Keep beans. I don't want a bean in any way, shape, or form. No beans. Get them gone. Tell me one way a bean is good. I've been noticing that you're having a real Monday this Tuesday. I tried to tell y'all <laughs> I was coming in hot. Can you just tattoo that on my leg right yep. here? Can you tattoo it right here? I may never have a mansion. I do have a home. Uh, but I write some songs. Man, you know I don't know what the lyrics were. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't know. I just want to see you what laying this tattoo were. bit, man. Uh, right in the chicken leg. Uh, hold on. <laughs> oh, but I got a couple songs and some boys that I call friends. Birdbiler.com slash join, everybody. Join the community that we got going on. I got some boys and uh, we got like one, two girls in the membership that I call friends. Uh I, I might tattoo that on my arm. Seriously. Serious. I got but I got a couple songs and boys, some boys that I call friends. Mm -hmm. And a pretty girl that I call my own. And mm -hmm. Willie Boo Boo also is here. I, I'm all right. I got a son who is cute as all get out. That's true. You know, in we also like we also have to fight against this. Uh, Back of the thigh. We have to fight against this bullshit, right? And so here you see like the songwriter making the turn, right? Yeah. This is when you start saying, I might never have a mansion, but I got a good life. And man, the more that we yearn for things to make us feel better and not um, gratitude to make us feel better, the more out of touch we get with gratitude the more miserable we will feel. It's just a that's just like simple math. Gratitude is the cure for uh, you know this this overwhelming feeling of insufficiency that we have. That but is I, my that's my belief. 
my belief. What I'm not grateful for is all these folks in the chat talking about how I can't fit that lyric on my chicken legs. Not grateful for y'all. Don't I ain't worried about none of y'all. My massive tree trunk thighs. So this is like a, a good spot. We're gonna we're gonna just try to use this vocal mic to get us like the audio that we need for everything. But um, this is fun if you consider. Uh, I like to refer to it as uh, the three levels of bar chords, the first being the primary in an E shape, right? In an E shape. The secondary being in the A shape. And then the tertiary being in the D shape. So that the third level, you're working off of this, which is effectively an E chord, which this song is written in. So we're up here with... And that's done by taking your D chord and sliding it up two frets, one full step. And you start with this note. So we're just moving from this E shape, from this chord. So you, this is a good uh, opportunity to practice for those of you who are doing some lead guitar stuff, to practice some hammer-ons and pull-offs as well as to practice playing with your fingers, which is part of how the pluckiness of this electric guitar part, this electric guitar sound is created. But you're just starting on that E string up on the fourth fret and pulling down to the second. And you're pulling all three off. Those three notes, right? And then bringing it up from the B string up to the second fret from open, open two, up to the f open E string again. So you got those notes. And that's just that first phrase. And then you're moving over here down to the D string in that fourth position where you're basically at a F sharp. That's the note that you start on D string, fourth fret, sliding up two. So you go in four, six, and then up to the four on G. Starting on the D, on the four, up to the six, to the four on G. So from there, we're at the first phrase is, sorry guys. And then we're just gonna practice a little bit of hammer on with a double stop. That's where we're taking our index finger, covering the fourth fret with the G and the B string and then just hammering up with your middle finger up to that fifth fret. So the effect is. Actually, I think this is how it goes. I'm not really certain at this point. I'm starting to doubt myself. All right, and then it's just that same phrase again. And this time you practice not a hammer on a hammer on or a pull off, but a slide down from covering that G and B string like you were with that index finger and slide it down. So the two phrases together. So there's that mapped out. You guys can go replay that on Twitch. A little extra deep dive into that guitar part because I thought that was pretty cool. Y'all give it up for Chuck Diesel, everybody, for coming in here and being a Mr. Guitar gu Tutorial Man. He's trying to take Michael Palmisano's spot. Uh, everybody, watch out. Watch your asses, Michael Palmisano. So that was our first ever deep dive. We've never done that on a song. Let us know in the comments. How do you feel about it? How can we make it better? Uh, how did you feel about our first try? I loved it, man. It was good to look at it from different aspects. The production, the writing, the concept, the technical music stuff. It's a lot of fun to dig in. Much loved American, American Aquarium. Hit the like and subscribe button and we'll see you somewhere on down the river.